I will reveal an easy, fast, proven five-step process to finding free Scopus Index journals. And it allowed our clients at Academic English Now to publish 25 papers in 2024 alone in Scopus Index journals. So the first step that you need to follow is to look at the reference list of the paper that you've been writing. And if you haven't started writing your paper yet, then you wanna look at the reference list of the previous paper that you've recently published that is similar to what you're writing now, or maybe a PhD thesis if you've recently finished a PhD and are extracting papers from your PhD. So you wanna open that paper and go through the reference list here. Preferably, you just want to copy and paste everything to a new clean um, Word document. So I'm just gonna do that now. And then what you wanna do is identify all the journals that you have papers from in your reference list. And preferably, you just want to copy those journals into a separate Word document and prepare a list that will just have the names of the journals um, in it. So you can pause the video and do this right now. Before we go to the next step, you might be wondering why are we using the reference list of the current paper that you're writing or the previous papers that you've written and why are we copying and pasting these journals? Well, the reason for that is that if you have been referring to papers from those journals in the current paper that you're writing or in the last paper that is similar, this means that those journals are likely a very, very good paper, very good fit for your paper because they are publishing work on similar topic that is relevant to what you're writing now and they're publishing similar types of paper so if you're writing a review paper you're probably reviewing to uh, you're referring to other review papers so they're publishing work on similar topics and similar type of papers so then as a result it is likely that the paper that you're writing if you submit it to one of those journals it will be a very good fit for that journal and you can maximize your chances of it being accepted so now off to step two now that you've got your list of journals uh, you want to narrow down that list to the journals that you've you've got on your reference list more than once so preferably journals that you've referred to two or three times in your reference list. And the, the easy way to spot that is use control F feature, where you can just search for particular journals that you're on your list, and you can see how many times they appear on the reference list. So for example, this particular journal just appears once on the reference list. However, this particular journal, ELT journal, it, it appears on the list five times. So this is a really good journal to be then moving on to step three, which I'll show you in a second and going into more detail. Because if I've referred to this journal five times, it means I've cited a lot of other papers that are relevant to my paper and that journal is publishing research that is very relevant to my research. So it's more likely to publish what I'm writing right now. So that's step number two. You wanna pause the video and get it done right now and create a shorter list of journals, maybe two to five journals that you have referred to at least two times. Now at this stage, you have three to five journals that you've referred to several times in your current paper or in your previous papers. And what you need to do next is go to their website to verify if they are Scopus Index. And as a bonus, you can also check the impact factor of the journal and the quartile that they are in. And to do this, you know, the, the fastest way is just to Google the journal and then head to the website. So I've got one journal like this open here uh, in front of me. And straight away, some journals, even on the main side of that journal, they'll give you the impact um, factor in here. You can also head to the About section to find out more about that uh, journal in terms of its impact factor and its listing. So in here, it's clearly listed as a, as a Scopus indexed um, journal. And in here, you've got other indexing services that this journal is part from. So this is this is a really fast way to check if this journal is a Scopus Index journal. Now, if that info isn't readily available on the website, it should be for most really good Scopus Index journal. It will be just right there in the About section. You can also go to uh, the SciMark Journal Rankings site 
and just type in the name of the journal here. And just the way this site works, just by the very definition, if the journal appears on this site, it means it is Scopus Index. And it will also give you more information. So it will show you whether it's a Q1, Q2 or Q3 journal. And again, by the very definition, if it is a Q1 journal, it's already on Scopus. And because the way they calculate the quartiles is on the Scopus database. So that's the next step that you want to follow through right now, pause this video and get it done. Now that you've ensured that the journals that you've selected as Scopus Index, you know what quartile they're in, you want to also check whether they're free to publish in. As a general rule, the vast majority of really good Scopus Index journals are completely free to publish in. There are some well-known exceptions, such as maybe Frontiers journals or The Lancet, which is one of the top journals in medicine. But these exceptions are really very few and very far between. As a general rule of thumb, you can assume that it's free to publish in Scopus Index journals. But just to be on the safe side, you want to check it before you uh, submit. And you want to, we'll use Nature as an example. Um, the journal Nature, but you can use it obviously for the journal that you want to publish in. So if you go to the four authors section, sometimes this might be in the submission guidelines or about journal, uh, in, it might hide in different sections. But in here it's four authors and then you've got publishing options. And as it, as it says here, and just to kind of translate it to human language, you've got two models. The first one is the standard model where, you know, you publish your paper for free, you, do, you don't have to pay anything, but the users, i.e. the universities or individual researchers who want to read your papers, they have to pay Nature and subscribe to Nature in order to be able to read your paper. But you aren't paying anything. And this is how the vast majority of highly ranked Scopus Index journals work. However, you might also want to make your paper open access. In that case, you do have to pay. There are, of course, numerous advantages of making it open access, such as increasing the reach of your paper and therefore the number of citations that you will get, the impact that you will make, and it's more likely that you will in the long run become the go-to authority in your figure. But that's completely optional. Yes, you can uh, pay if you want to make it open access, but you can also publish your paper completely for free. So this is how you would want to check whether the journal is free for publication. Now, none of those four steps will matter if you choose a journal that's a bad fit for your study. Think of your papers as these blocks of different shapes and colors, like this purple circle, or this green triangle, or this red star. And then think of the journals as these um, holes of different shapes. So no matter how hard you try, if you pick the wrong journal or the wrong hole to put your beautiful um, paper in, no matter how hard you try, you just can't fit it in. And it's very frustrating because you keep on getting rejected. So you need to pick the journal that's the right fit for your paper. And then publishing will really feel effortless because you're sending your papers exactly to the journals that want those kind of papers. So you might be wondering, how do I choose the right journal? Now that you have a list of one to three free Scopus Index journals that are a relatively good fit for your study, because remember, we already started with journals from your reference list that you've been referring to. So they're already a fairly good fit, but we want to definitely make sure that the absolute number one fit for your study. So how do we do that? When you land on the journal's website, you want to head to the about section in here and read more about it. Or in the submission section or submit, you also have author guidelines and you probably want to read through both. And basically what you're looking for here is the information about what type of studies are they publishing. Are they publishing just review studies or maybe they don't want review or theoretical studies. They only want experimental studies. What sort of topics are they interested? Typically, a journal will give you a list, a bullet point list of the topics that they want. And if your topic doesn't fit there, well, then your paper is very likely to be rejected. And also, you want to be looking at what is the target audience for that journal. Some journals are more practice 
oriented. Some journals are much more local, while others have a more international audience. So with that in mind, if you write a very practical paper, but you send it to a journal that's interested more in theory and theoretical um, interpretations and um, suggestions for future research and contributions, your paper will be rejected straight away as well. So now you've got a five step process to choosing free Scopus Index journals that you can implement straight away. But before you go and do this, let me just maybe answer the question when you should implement that easy proven five-step process before you write the paper or once you've finished writing the paper. Now, there are basically two schools of thought on that. Um, some people claim that you must always choose the journal first before you start writing the paper. Now, this obviously has some clear advantages. The main advantage being that you can then really shape your paper around the journal, the specific journal requirements to try to ensure that the risk of rejection is as low as possible. The problem I see with that is that many PhD students and researchers will just get stuck on that stage and really overthink which journal they should choose and postpone the writing forever. You might also end up paying too much attention to really small and frankly irrelevant details about teeny tiny specific issues that only that journal wants, which will mean that you cannot see the forest from the trees. And the final problem with that is that you end up with a product that is only suitable for that one particular journal. And if in case that paper gets rejected, trying to resubmit it somewhere else will mean quite a lot of work. So the second option, which I subscribe to, is to select the journal during and after the writing process. First off, you need to get on with the writing itself to truly understand what your paper is about, what the contributions of that paper are, to be able to choose a journal that is a good fit. And you also need to start creating a reference list so that you know which journals you can be choosing from. Otherwise, you're kind of choosing from hundreds of journals that are out there and you don't even know what the target should be because you haven't even started writing yet. And third, I think you really need to try to focus on a good overall paper that will be a very good fit for numerous highly ranked Scopus Index journals in your discipline. So in case that paper gets rejected, it will be very easy to resubmit it somewhere else. Now that you've got the right free Scopus Index journal for your next paper, you need a proven process that allows you to write the paper fast before somebody else comes up with that same or very similar idea and steals it from you and submits the paper first. And this happens all the time in science. So in this next video, I'll show you exactly step by step how you can write your paper and submit it in the next 48 hours. So watch this video to write and submit your paper to a Scopus Index Journal in just a weekend.